Hello and welcome to Dungeon Design 101. I am your host, T the Writer. Today we're going to have a look at a crypt. Now, crypts, as far as tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, tend to be big, sprawling, labyrinth thing, underground places full of skeletons and zombies and vampires. And that's just, that's just not always the case. It becomes a cliche. So what I have built here today is a quote-unquote realistic looking crypt. Now you'll notice that there are only two coffins there, uh, three treasure chests, you know it's a very simple very compact building you know there's stairs there at the front this could be above ground or below ground depending on your tastes and just wanted to kind of take a step back from the usual like mazes that you run into Oh, this ancient crypt it's been corrupted by necromatic magic well you know it doesn't always have to be that way and I do as per usual preach that if you're going to build a dungeon for a tabletop game or for for anything like D&D or Pathfinder that you build a real location now what does that mean like if you if this shape was above ground you know it looks like a building it's not sprawling all over the place like something crazy it was built with something architectural in mind there's a pair of double doors um, none of the doors are locked. There may be a lock on the front door, but not on the inner door. You'll notice there's a uh, there's an altar there in the middle to Saren Ray, the god of the sun, also called the Dawnflower. That's a Pathfinder god, but also a very common one because she's a sun god. You know, there's flowers there in front of the uh, in front of the altar. There's even an offering down there on the bottom left that, you know, somebody left flowers for one of the deceased. You know, and this could be any number of families. When I was building this, I was thinking of a farming family, thusly the guy there on the right, that, you know, they were the first in this region, so, and they, you know, helped bring this town or whatever up from nothing at all, so they built this place to, to house their dead, to do, you know, it's not cursed ground, it's not run by a vampire or a necromancer there's nobody in there's no tomb robbers in here but should you have to visit this location for whatever reason you would find that it's a real functioning crypt you know on the on the western walls there if this were underground you know there's all the cabinets or drawers or whatever you want to call them where you would keep the dead and there's two per square because when you're laying flat you don't you're not five feet across so each one of those each one of those squares could represent a dead person buried in the wall. You know, then you go through the big double doors and around the corner where the two uh, coffins are, and those could be the progenitors of the family. You know, if they've been in this region for 400 years or what have you, you know, this was the original, you know, covered wagon husband and wife that came in, had 12 kids, blah, 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 and, and started, you know, putting roots down in this region, well, maybe their children buried them here in these nice coffins in this nice place and then built the mausoleum around them so that, you know, the fam this is the family crypt, whether you're buried whether you're married into this family or whatever, but those two were the original members of the family. And you know, you see they've got flower offerings, they've got a a chest there. And what would you put in the chests in a crypt? Like next to the Next to the altar of Saren Ray, what do you think is in that chest if this was a realistic setting? Gold? Jewels? No. Magic items? No. It's a crypt. What would you put in there? Really actually think about it. Um, if nobody has come in here and disturbed anything, you know, there's no shambling skeletons or grave robbers or anything, what do you think is actually in that chest? The short answer would probably be like a holy book, you know, some incense burners, maybe, whatever the traditions for Saren Ray are, if, if they burn incense for her, I don't know. Um, there could be a book of the dead in there, and I don't mean like the Egyptian book of the dead, I mean like a book of, you know, a list of names with birthdays and death days. I actually have that in my family in real life. We have a... Um, a Bible, my my grandmother has it, and she'll pass it on to her mom when she 
to, to my mom when she dies. Um, and we're Protestants, so, it, or rather, the the Baptist Bible is the Protestant Canaan. So, on the inside cover of this Bible is several generations worth of names, birthdays, and death days. So that's kind of my family's Book of the Dead kind of thing going on in there. So there could be a holy book of Saren Ray, you know, with all kinds of family names in it with their birthdays and death days. It could be just a chest with a book of records in it. You know, a few sticks of incense, some uh, some torches, because it doesn't look like there's any windows in this whole place. If they were going to bury somebody, they might have some torches on hand. You know, some dusty robes, if you wanted to sit there, you know, cloaked in black and just kind of say your prayers before Saren Ray and, you know, be in mourning by yourself. That kind of thing. Nothing outrageous is going to be in that chest at the very front. Now, you'll notice that hidden in the walls is another chest there at the northern part. That might have something interesting, like the family relic, the family you know, the first plow that ever came across this land, but it was coated with silver, so it's, you know, uh, a mithril woodsman's axe that helped clear the land, and it never grew dull, so it was passed down the family until it passed into legend, but it's actually buried among the among the dead of this farming family. You know, nothing absolutely crazy, but, you know, it's a magic item, quote-unquote, so it's buried in a behind a hidden door in a treasure chest. It could be locked and or trapped. And that could be the only dangerous thing in here because that's the family's most valuable possession. But it still makes sense because, you know, you could hear a rumor. You could hear, you know, that family's descendants talking about it. And in fact, that could be the reason that you go into this crypt in the first place. Hey, one of my relatives had a mithril axe that never grew dull and you know the the haft of it never split never did anything they cut down a thousand trees with this one axe you know i think it's somewhere in the family crypt could you go look for it and you know it's there in that chest behind that hidden door etc etc there could be nothing else dangerous in this crypt but still you've got the design for the crypt here and there it is and that could be a nice short adventure or a sub quest or you know that one day that only two of the four party members show up because so and so has to go to a wedding and so and so has like a track meet and stuff like that where you only get half your players but you still want to play here's a small crypt with a goal and it's built like a crypt you know and of course there's going to be the chaotic players that, that they see the coffins and they automatically want to open them because there might be skeletons that jump out and try to kill us but they're just you know they're remains they're not anything out of the ordinary and what's in the chest at the southern end you know that could be any number of things it could be you know not the family jewels but like personal keepsakes you know pictures paintings clothing things that would probably come apart through the passage of time I imagine gems and other other things would be either on the uh, skeletons inside the coffins or things like that, or kept by the family and sold, or kept as keepsakes, you know, elsewhere. What do you think? What do you think is in that chest next to the two coffins? This obviously isn't a super dangerous building, but it's just stone walls. The front door could be locked. You know, it's it's a place. And I, I try, you know, through all of my dungeoneering, Dungeon 101, you know, dungeon creation stuff, I can't stress it enough. And I preach it to person after person because I always see them making these outrageous places that make no sense, that don't have a history. Build a place and then make it a hot spot for dungeons or traps or whatever it happens to be. You know, this this is a family crypt, a relatively small family crypt, where, you know, less than 50 people are buried here. You know, there's three chests, some flowery offerings. You know, this is an old farmer's family. It's nothing outrageously epic, but it's still special because you built it and it functions as a location. So try and keep that in mind the next time you're building a crypt or an underloft or what have you. A mausoleum 
of who's buried there you know what god did they worship why are they very religious how rich were they you know is this building above ground below ground is it in the middle of a graveyard you know do people come and leave offerings you know does the entire place just like stink of incense because the family is obsessed with the dead or was there a funeral recently and it's still smoky because they were you know burning torches while they were struggling with the with the coffin because the guy that died was really fat and heavy you know think about the small details and your players will get into it all the more so until next time have a good one